I knew the Rhapsody in Blue my whole life, from the very simplest main melody in the key of F major to the larger original score, um, which came way later in my life in 1997. That, for me, was always a piece that was a part of me from the time I was a child. I got to know the original manuscript through Dr. Alicia Zizzo, who brought it to me, the solo version. She had created an annotated Rhapsody in Blue for solo piano based on the original manuscripts. Not, actually, more piano music than is even in the 1924 published score. There's more piano music. And I was like, where did you find this? I love this. And I actually had to play it with the Boston Pops a few months later. And I contacted them and said, can I please do this version with the extra piano parts? And that became the first public performances of that since Gershwin probably played it in 1924. And we uh, prefaced that with performances in Bridgeport, Connecticut, just about two months before that. So I tried it out and it worked out really well. So I thought, gee, one day I want to record this because this should be recorded. And having gone through all the different versions of it, finally getting to this original manuscript and then learning a lot of the pieces that came before Rhapsody in Blue, the Rialto Ripples, Lullaby, uh, Impromptu in Two Keys, um, and Blue Monday, 1922 opera that Gershwin wrote, which Paul Whiteman said you know, the libretto wasn't very strong, the, the, the opera itself didn't have a long career. But the music did, and to Paul Whiteman, it was good enough to invite George White, George Gershwin, to write Rhapsody in Blue in 1924. And hearing the Gershwin piano rolls and the old videos of him, I kind of learned the style that he was doing. I can't copy Gershwin. He had a certain way with the, his own music that nobody could do. But what I did sense about his style is this wonderful uh, homage to Debussy, Ravel, and Chopin in his music. There's so much in there. And that inspired the way I interpret his piece. I mean, I don't intentionally want it to sound like Debussy, Ravel, Chopin, but, and just, but more distinctively Gershwin, and the way he wanted it to sound. But there's, there are colors in there which, uh, as great a pianist as Gershwin was, he himself did not bring out some of the beautiful colors in his music which do reflect the music of Debussy and Ron Chopin. So I try to do it without straying too far from what he intended, but uh, there's a definite reference to those composers in his music which is staggeringly beautiful and powerful.